I know that when you were down here, you were one of the loudest voices calling for civil rights, calling for people to be heard. What have you been doing since you left Fair Orlando to help push forward this most important effort? Um, you know, I think the biggest thing is one continuing continuing to use that voice. Uh, I think the NBA, the MBPA, uh, Dove Men Plus Care, we've all done a great job of finding ways to amplify our voice and allowing our us guys to kind of use our voice in, in the ways we want. You know, so for myself, you know, finding ways to give back to kids, um, education, you know, reform, finding ways to, you know, just change the way black men and women are perceived in the media and to people. You know, we're not a threat. You know, we're we're equals, and I think. You know, for myself, um, just continuing to find ways to inform and help people understand more about our history as, as African Americans and also, like I said, the fact that we aren't um, a threat to society. Absolutely. I think uh, one of your coaches said, there is a player who is pulled over for being suspicious. Being black is not being suspicious. It's an important, important message that you guys amplified here in this bubble. Frankly, better than a lot of people expected you to. They were worried about the distraction of basketball. You guys turned around and used that as your advantage, and I know are only continuing now and with this campaign. So I'm very grateful for that, as are a lot of people, Donovan. I do got to ask you a little bit about basketball, though. Has your team gotten over that Game 7 loss to the Nuggets? Because, you know, that ball went in and out, and, you, you know, I don't have to tell you. It's it's funny. Um, we actually just had a call earlier, earlier today, and I think the first thing we all talked about was that we're not over it. You know, uh, credit to Denver <laughs> and what they what they've done, you know, uh, not just beating us, but beating uh, LA as well. But, you know, we felt like we were right right there. You know, we had control of that series and we, we just had a few mishaps that we didn't have throughout the series. And, you know, we're gonna look in the mirror and understand um, now we're getting Boyan back, you know, 20 points per game, which this definitely yes. helps, but we're right there. And I think we, we're really excited for next season. Yeah, I mean, look, if that Mike Conley shot had gone in, does it make you think as you are watching the next series and you do see the Nuggets that you were right there with take down the Clippers? Do you start to run through your head? That could have been us. That could have been us. A hundred percent. But I think, you know, when you live when you live in that mindset, I think it's kind of it, it, it fuels you. It fuels me, you know, watching. Yeah. You know, obviously I'm close. I've, I'm, I'm pretty cool with Jamal. We've known each other since high school. So watching him play and watching him do things, I'm like, wow, I could, you know, I could see how I can incorporate that into my game. I think Jokic, watching them, Jeremy Grant playing well, those guys really did their thing. But at the end of the day, it really kind of pisses you off. I'm not going to lie. You know, where it's like, <laughs> man, we were right there. At the end of the day, yep. like, that's, what it, that's what it is. We're right there. And, you know, I think for myself and, and a lot of the guys um, on the team, all the guys, I should say, and coaches, uh, we're ready to go. We're ready for the season to start <laughs> next month if it had to. Um, and I think we're fired up. And I think that's the proper mindset to have. Well, I don't have great news for you about next month, but last month was pretty good for you. You had a couple of 50-point games. You averaged more than 36 points per game in the postseason. Do you expect that scoring surge to be such a big part of your game and carry over to next season? Um, I think, you know, it's, it's going to be tough to, to average, what is it, 36, 37. But I think the yeah. biggest thing, like I said before <laughs> I got down there, was you know, being a better playmaker overall, whether that's continuing to score, finding guys. You know, what I'm most proud of is the fact that, you know, I know it's, it's maybe a small increase, but the increase in assists for myself, you know, finding ways to get yeah. to possibly six, seven. It's, obviously, we have multiple ball handlers, so it's a little bit tougher, but understanding that that's where I'm at, picking up on the defensive end, finding ways to continue to elevate my game and uh, be a leader for this team. Well, your jazz coaches have said from day one that you walked in the facility. No one has been more dedicated to breaking down tape, so I know you will be pouring over every frame, getting ready for next year. I, I do got to play America's favorite game with you, Donovan. We like to play here at the jump. What were you thinking? You can tell us what went through your mind during these highlights. So my first question is, <laughs> what were you thinking when you kept running into oh your friend Jalen Brown inside <laughs> of the bubble? Because it was constant. It was quite a bit. Um, man, so, you know, Jalen and I, we play Team USA together. Um, <laughs> so we see each other all the time and, you know, we kind of made it into a thing, you know, and kind of when we saw each other recording. There were times where I was like, bro, like I'm eating food, like don't record me right now. Right. And then there's times where I'm, <laughs> I'm, he's in the cold tub and I'm messing with him. But I think it's just all, all fun and games, but it was uh, it was cool. Just like, I think that was part of the bubble experience. You know, it felt like a big AU camp where everybody was there together. Right. And, you know, I think that was, that was, that was pretty great. <laughs> I did like that. Won't leave me alone. <laughs> the, only in the bubble, <laughs> only in the bubble. Only in the bubble. <laughs> 
What were you thinking, Donovan Mitchell, when you jammed it past Michael Porter Jr.? This is from Game 5. You exploded with this dunk. What was going through your mind? I didn't even know it went in. Um, I, had, I, my, my, I, to be honest with you, I just, you know, it was one of those things. If I had taken the layup, you know, I felt like he had the advantage. Uh, him being six ten, so at the end of the day, there are mm -hmm. times where, you know, you just have to finish through people. Uh, and I think that was one of those moments. We were also, we had given up a fifteen point lead at that time. So for myself, it was kind of a way to kind of, you know, make a statement like, look, we're not, we're not letting this happen. Obviously, we did let it happen, but like <laughs> that was really just the the mindset to kind of give my team a surge and. Um, but I didn't even know it went in when I made it. Um, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't know if they make posters like they used to, but that would be a poster. I'm Just definitely going to have that one. All right, see, good. We can do a homemade poster. We can make a poster. <laughs> uh, I do need to know what you were thinking, Donovan. When the ball landed, well, it landed somewhere very special to you earlier this season <laughs> versus the Kings. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to take a charge. Not only did you not get the call, but the bell landed right on you. And it became, I think this was across the internet for like six months after yeah. this. And of course your teammates relished it for some reason. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> All I heard was uh, my assistant coach, Johnny Bryant, told me to get up. <laughs> 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 That's why I looked at that and just started smiling. Cause I was just like, you know, you gotta laugh that one off and, and get back to it. But <laughs> he's pretty, he was always pretty tough on me. Uh, and he told me to get up. Um, and, and so that was, that was the only thing I heard at that time. I'm just going to say that we hear all about how close knit you guys are, all that teammate mm -hmm. love, and Joe Ingles was just openly laughing at you. So Joe, I... Joe, but see, the thing with Joe is like, he's always finding ways to make fun of me. He's just always a jokester. <laughs> um, in that instance, he let me he let me know about it tomorrow. The, I mean, sorry, the next day, the day after that. So I didn't, right. I know the internet had it, but I didn't hear it. I didn't forget it in the locker room either. So. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.